The first submission was the Better Ageing Participation Funding and we work with Deaf Sports Australia in that particular application and we worked, the, the premise was to work with Bowls Australia and Golf Australia uh, to build their resources and their capacity to be inclusive of older Australians. We also applied to participation funding with Blind Sport Australia and Deaf Sport Australia and that was uh, leave no one behind. Initially it was going to be doing face-to-face -face forums but of course, of course COVID-19 stopped that happening. Um, we very quickly were able to meet with in excess of 26 NSOs, SSOs, um, stakeholders that deliver services for, for um, people in the country and were able to put a bit of a um, communication slant on it. So the three cohorts we represent, you can't always tell that a person has an impairment. It's not always obvious, but that doesn't mean that there's not barriers to stopping them being fully included in sport. The funding we took us to another level. We are able to produce quality resources, um, toolkits, education modules that some of the NSOs have actually picked up to use. Um, to make sure that their sport's inclusive. We've been able to produce uh, videos, as I said, education modules, and they've been embedded into some of the coaching resources of NSOs. Because of COVID, we've had many more virtual meetings uh, and been able to talk about uh, the risk of the inclusive and diverse uh, programs being uh, postponed due to COVID. Um, Bowls Australia, we worked really closely with, and they've embedded um, some of the resources into their their everyday programs, which means that there'll be videos inspiring people to be involved. Um, I know many of the NSOs have talked about including materials into uh, their coaching courses. Many of the NSOs have done it, and as I said, we, we met with in excess of 26. Fitness Australia also um, has asked us to speak at their, when, whenever their face-to-face -face professional development forums get back up and running, um, they've asked us to do that first one. Um, we've done a podcast, talked about how fitness centres can be more inclusive, what they need to do, what sort of communication tools they require. So there's sort of, there's an array of different things. The, diff the, the difference with participation funding, it's al allowed us to build those resources, as I said, the quality resources that then sports can use. So not just that initial meeting, which we might've had before, the lobbying and the advocacy, but all of a sudden, being able to back it up with some, some um, as I said, resources that they can use in their programs, which enhances their case. It provides a bit of a catalyst and inspiration to, for, for sport to be involved because NSOs were able to apply for it as well. So they're able to do beyond their, their national team, their professional codes. You know, obviously the Olympics is going on at the moment. It's, it, it's being able to drill down and make sure that their sport's available to all Australians the participation fundings helped, I believe, in a major way, uh, really uh, given a platform for sport to offer their services to a much wider group of Australians.